Well, it truly is a good evening here, way past 6.30 in the evening. As you join us now for the WSL Post Show, we moved everything lock, stock and barrel across except the desk and the fish tank. As uh, you join us here in the late evening light in Portugal. Good evening. I'm Gig Salias alongside Strada Wazalewski, Ross Williams. A big day. We got you early in the dark, guys. And gee, it's all unfolded. Yeah, we're leaving in the dark, too. <laughs> Let me tell you. The well, dream job, huh? The way, the way has it been on fire, though. Yeah. I'm glad we moved here, boys, because Super Tubos is, was all about kind of trying to maybe find an air section, and then all of a sudden we see these long roping lefts. This has been fun. Yeah, well, we, we knew, when just seeing it, you know, being here the last couple of days, taking a look at it, you know, you had that thought of how good it was going to get, and then to see it all just unfold and just get better and better all day and just see how good the call was. Talked to a few people that were at Super Tubos, like kind of flat almost in like onshore, just crumbly waves, so stoked. Held it. Well, day four of our waiting period here in Portugal, and uh, Travis Logie, Deputy Commissioner, pulls the trigger, gets a full day of action we got going at 8.45 this morning, sorting out those round two heats, boys, to wrap up that round. We were left then with the 24 surfers. Into round three we went, some highlights there. Well, you saw the, uh, the edit open with that barrel of Joel Parkinson as they started using the outgoing tide here, guys. Yeah, Parko is getting... Uh Crafty. I mean, he's been just hunting those little sandbars up and down. Uh, the other day, I saw him pulling out of here after he surfed and then went up to another sandbar that we had surfed, you know, earlier in the week, and he's just on fire. So he's definitely been honing those little backhand skills, you know, finding those little threads. Well, the crowds absolutely flocked around John John Florence again here today in Portugal. An important step forward for him as he got the unlock in round three here, guys. Gabriel Medina would fall, though, and the whole picture tightens up. It was a nerve-wracking affair for John John Florence here because he was up against that uh, dangerous wild card, Federico Marais, who did huge damage in the draw here last year. Yeah, he did. And, you know, John, if you remember, he had a, a close heat over at Super Tubos in round two, so that gave him a little breathing room today. He was able to ease into the day. Frederico is always a, a tough guy to beat. You know, he, he sticks his board to the water. He's always going to be steady, but he did look a little shaky in his seat. So maybe the extra respect for John John, he, you know, kind of made him a little bit nervous. And John, I was impressed with his heat. He really kept his board tracking to the water. He, you know, he, saved a, a, he surfed a safe heat, but he still threw some tail around. Yeah, you know what? Yesterday, John came here and surfed at the exact same time on the tide that he knew his heat was going to be and went out and did the damage. I mean, Frederico's not laying down. The guy, Marias, is just all up in the lip, and, you know, hats off to him. This just wasn't his, his event, and John John really did put in the time, the effort, did the, the timing with the surfing yesterday, and he was a whole new John than we've seen in this event so far. Absolutely opening up yesterday, looked like a world champion, you know, surfer, and then he came out in his heat today, and we got to see just a lot of confidence out of him. And, <laughs> Not overdoing it, but just really on point, and I I really liked the. I mean, look at how fast and clean he's surfing right here, well, Ross. I I agree, Strider. I think confidence is the main word here, and you know I, I think that type of surfing where he he keeps his board planted to the water, um, you know, kind of ups the ante. I also like that he was on his backhand. You know how John is so apt to go to the air when he's on his forehand, so he was able able to have such a steady heat. Well, that 16.27, seeing John John sail through to the next round. It did take him a full 15 minutes, though, to unlock that first ride. But all nervous moments gone for John John once he got that uh, first ride underway. And, well, a great performance. Jeremy Flores, though, would cause big damage here in round three, guys, as he would sort out Gabriel Medina. Yeah, you know what? Jeremy showed up at the beach, and he had watched, uh, you know, the broadcast before and watched Parco get shacked. And... He came down to the beach all fired up, talking about two rides, and told me he was going to turn so hard he was going to hurt and hurt himself. And I was like, whoa, he was like that psyched before he went out of his heat and literally just did exactly what he said. He went out there and turned so fast and so well into the bowl. I mean, he was on fire. Jeremy Flores reminds me of some of my favorite Moke friends back home in Hawaii. He's just kind of scrappy. You know, he's the perfect guy to kind of answer the call against Gabriel Medina. Gabriel Medina, by the way, you know, everyone's favorite to maybe win at these head-high macaronis on sandbar, basically. You know, yeah. He was the guy to beat, so that was a huge upset that J-Flo provided. But what happened to well, Gabriel Medina, you guys? I mean, honestly, I haven't seen him look like that all year. I, I, he just, maybe it was the pressure of watching, you know, John John win and having to go out and perform under pressure. But he just looked like, you know, a dog trying to find some scraps. He just really didn't perform, except there was one really good wave where he really did perform. That was a nice little tube right here where he got, a, I think it was a seven on, 
uh, and finished up right there. There was another one where he did a three turn combo that looked really good, but you know, Jeremy just finding all these open face waves where he just went to town. Yeah, bringing an eight and then a 7.77 .77 to keep the pressure on Gabriel Medina. And it was a little bit of a panicky uh, run at the end for Gabriel there, looking for to try and unlock numbers. Yeah, uh, you know, well, uh, Strider, he, he definitely was fidgety, but that's how he competes. He catches a million waves. Um, and the, the waves he caught at the end of the heat, the last 10 minutes, he was forcing the issue. I will say, I, I mean, I thought he was kind of on fire. He laid down some serious tracks. He was ripping, um, but he didn't get just that extra maneuver he needed up against Jeremy Flores. Yeah. Jerry had, Jeremy had those long waves where he was able to hit the lip six times, and that gave him the edge. I felt like he just literally needed to take a deep breath in the heat, and he never did. And the pace was just with Jeremy Flores. And he was just putting nails in every wave. I mean, just tink, 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 and just the coffin got sunk right down six feet deep for Medina. I didn't, I didn't mind the way Gabriel surfed. I really didn't. Um, I, you know, he always competes that wave in terms of catching a bunch of waves. Um, I just think the difference was he needed a, a longer wall to do a couple more turns, and that made the difference. Well, Ross, I'm going to steal your word there, swagger, because uh, Jeremy Flores at the end, they're just strong direction changes on the wave face for a, uh, for a win through round three here. There are those results. You see that eight to really get the momentum going. Jeremy Flores' way. And then, well, the pair of sevens sees Gabe Rodina bowing out of round three here and really opening the door for John John Florence in well, the world title discussions. Yeah, and it. you look at that point total for Medina, like you said. He's over 14 points. You know, he's on par average, basically, for his runs uh, through events. And, you know, he just... In, in form on fire Jeremy you know was not to be stopped well Jeremy Flores doing no favors to the Brazilian fans and of course uh, Medina falling out of the draw here in 2016 making it a little easier for John John to gain more points now as the worst John John can do is a ninth lots to talk about with that but a uh, couple other wins just quickly Miguel Pupo and Connor Coffin getting wins in round three as well just to mention that but how was this last one almost in the dark Jordy Smith going to town on the right handers here all six foot three have been big leverages on the <laughs> rail and uh, well it's goodbye to Kai Otten in the round so many nicknames come to life uh, the giraffe all the, the big five game in South Africa right but uh, you know Jordy Smith he's just he's really fun to watch and whenever he has a big open ocean wall like this he tears it apart he treats it like it's a little head high wave yeah he you know he just put old bones to sleep out there unfortunately <laughs> he just come was on. just not his <laughs> His, you know, surf. He never found the right flow, right? He looked like he was always trying to catch up. Uh, Ots was, and you know, it, Jordy just look. Look at this guy. He's just sweeping off the top, just power gouging, back foot planted, flying over so these sick. huge lip floats. I mean, dropping out of the sky. Jordy Smith ready to throw a little spanner in the works on the world title, right? Because not out of it. Jordy is not out of it, and look at how on fire he is. So, you know what? He's going to be trying to keep the cork in the champagne bottle, <laughs> totally. let me tell you. Well, you know, and also a bit of a benefactor of a high tide, because had we had ruler edge low tide, Kai Otten would have been just shooting through those little barrels. It would have been a tough match for, for Jordy Smith, but this was tailor-made for his surfing. Well, Jordy shaking the sleepy result from France at the previous stop. And he would uh, really put the nail in the coffin here against Kai Otten. And of course, Jordy already with the big win in 2016, bringing himself into that world title discussion. And uh, well, in the late evening light here, your left-hander strides just providing all the way to dark here. Gosh, I mean, it is such a great wave, a great venue. I'm so glad that we had to move over here. We found ourselves in, you know, a, w a wave that's been offering all the way through the tides, right? I mean, we go through such a roller coaster here. Look at those point total, 17 points. I mean, that is just a knockout punch right there by Jordy Smith. But the, the, the roller coaster that we went through here with the tides and the conditions uh, and from the low to the high back to the, you know, the, the highs again, I mean, it's just crazy to see a wave keep producing all the way through it because it's very hard to do here in Europe, right? you got so many different conditions, but to have a place go all the way through the day like that's really hard Ross. it's fun gigs i mean high tide we have this right rip bowl and then but mainly it's all about the lefts and the scores are reflected uh, all day long if you got business done out in the left you got the big scores well michelle Barre is getting that big 9.7 early in the round geordie gets the 9.7 let's go down to uh, rosie he's there uh, he's there with rosie for the interview well, what an incredible finish of the day. Jordi, Gabriel Medina out of the competition, Matty Wilco out of the competition. You still have a shot at that world title. That's got to get you pretty excited. Oh, that's all you need is a, is a shot, right? Um, no, I'm just really excited. I mean, big ups to Trav Logie. You know, he's my boy. And, um, you yeah, know, he pulled the trigger and made the good call. And you've, you've seen, you know, the benefit of that. 
Um, everyone's just been absolutely ripping all day. So, uh, yeah, obviously really happy with my performance in that last heat. Um, yeah, I'm sucked. And you've been sampling some of these uh, breaks up and down here in Portugal. How fun is this place just to get that surfing on a rail and really just lay down a couple good tracks? Portugal is by far one of my favorite stops you know, of the year. Um, not only for the contest, but I just know that we're going to get extremely fun waves up and down the coast. Um, there's so much coastline um, and so many different banks. And uh, every year we seem to score. You know, I never, unfortunately, I never came last year, but every other year that I've come, I've just... Uh, yeah, we've really lucked out for waves and um, yeah, just happy this year that they've come, up, come over this side and, and got a bit of the action. And Jordy, the judges have kept this, the scale relatively low, so to unlock those nine-point rides, seven-point rides, that's a big deal. You have to be feeling like your surfing's validated and, and looking good and confident for the next coming rounds. Um, yeah, well, I guess the benefit you know, of having the whole day is that you get to see what they're scoring and you get to see what they're looking for. Um, you know, bar a couple little barrels here and there, they were really looking for the bigger waves, for the big turns. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of went out there, you know, I think Carr might have had the upper hand on, the, on a big open left. Um, but with the tide coming in, I knew that, that those walls were going to be, you know, pretty few and far between. Um, so I just wanted to try and surf as tight as I could possibly surf and, and just really try and bash the lip as hard as I could. Well, Jordy, go get some rest. Tomorrow could be a big day. Back up to you guys. Thanks so much, Rosie. And of course, uh, Geordie Smith mathematically still well within discussion here for a possible world title. John John out front is slipping through the round there. The worst that John John can do now is ninth here in Portugal. Have a look at the ramifications of that as you go down the table. Geordie Smith, if Geordie gets a win here, he'll send the title race to Pipeline Guards. And well, of course, uh, Gabriel Medina out of the mix. And then look out for Chloe and Dino. A win here on the championship tour level could see uh, Dino and Dino very much in discussion in 2016. So basically, you can see Florence, you know, he has control of it. It's his to lose, and he really makes it tough for the guys if he gets third or better. So he's got a few more heats before he starts really puffing his chest out. The good news for Florence is he's been doing so well this year at keeping his eyes on the prize. His focus has been laser sharp. Yeah, but from what I saw there, right, if he wins this event, he's going to win the world title, right? That's so right. Yep. The, that's just yep. a, the plain and simple fact is that we could have a world title go down right here in Portugal, right here on these sandbars, and somebody brand new could hoist up that trophy. Be pretty fun. Well, absolutely. Of course, we are now down to 12 surfers remaining as we tee up the four remaining heats of round four. We've cut that field in half by getting through round three here today, a big one for us. And of course, conditions already playing uh, into looking like a big day tomorrow. Of course, we'll keep a close eye on it. There is your tee up, guys. Any favorites jumping out at you? Of course, Kaloe and Dino, as we mentioned, in the world title hunts. He's up against Joel Parkinson and Julian Wilson. And Julian Wilson in form here, Strider. He is. He had a really close heat, though. And with that, you know, it, it, it kind of gives you that, like, nod, okay, I got through. Now I know I got to do the work. So I think he's going to be pushing really hard in that heat against Parkinson and, and Dino. So that is going to be just a great backhand attack, an all-out assault, depending on the conditions tomorrow, though, because, you know, we're going to have a big tide in the morning, and then, you know, it's going to drop off through the day, and we're supposed to have a lot more size. We could have some weather. We have no idea what we're going to wake up to, really. Well, I think, uh, you know, the, the cool thing about tomorrow is it's going to be, again, like today, where you're going to see low and high tide, so the conditions are going to change drastically, which will kind of allow different guys to be the guy to be. So if we got thick, heavy conditions, and by the way, the swell is supposed to be a little bigger tomorrow. Uh, Jordy Smith is looking spot on. Same with Michelle Perez, kind of sleepers in the field. But I, I think for someone who can adapt so well, low or high tide, John John's going to be tough. And um, I feel like he's starting, to, his trajectory looks like it's building right now. He looks shaky. He's looking more and more confident. A couple of highlights, favorite moments of the day. Pick one quickly, Ross. I, I like Michelle Perez's 9.7. Yeah. That was crazy wild surfing right there. Wow. Yeah, he was. It's really hard for me to really pick one out here. This is going to be hard for me. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day. I think maybe Parko's little barrel ride. I like the little tube yeah. ride he got. A little, just because I'm a tube kid and Piglet loved those little tube rides. So. Sick barrel. Nice Jigs, what about you? Oh, uh, my favorite was just seeing John John confidently move through the round. Mm. I just thought that he looked like a world champion heading towards his destiny. He could have really fallen apart by taking 15 minutes to activate that first ride. So well, I thought that was a little highlight for me I'll, right I'll there. I'll tell you, my least favorite moment of the day was watching Jadson Andre when he got crushed at the end there and, you know, thought he got the score, didn't get the score, and watched him walk off, and t you know, emotionally. 
Join us at 8 a.m. tomorrow, local time here in Portugal. A possible big day, and we could even crown a world champion here in Portugal.